Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Have China done it? Have China actually broken Blizzard's heart and the hearts of any other Western company that are looking to crack China? If you want to do business in China, you've got to go through a Chinese company. Blizzard themselves go through Natiz. And of course, they recently got together with Natiz to start creating Diablo Immortal, the mobile game that was there to hit China. Alan Adam at BlizzCon 2018, of course, said, hey, PC audience, and uh, told everyone that they were pulling off all their best people who no longer play PC and were putting them all on mobile games because it's a very lucrative marketplace, China. A marketplace which is heavily into mobile gaming, a marketplace which has grown up on monetization and microtransactions. It's not taboo, it's not looked down upon like it is in the West. It's a ripe audience for the taking. But the Chinese government, well, you know, they're not the bestest, but they look after some people, and it looks like they're looking after the next generation to come as they want to curb this gaming malarkey. China is imposing a curfew on online gaming for minors, the government has announced. This article coming from the BBC. I'll link it in the description box go, uh, down below. Go check it out in its entirety. Gamers under 18 will be banned from playing online between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. They will also be restricted to 90 minutes of gaming on weekdays and three hours on weekends and holidays. So, first things first, this is online gaming, not offline gaming. Obviously, it would be nigh on impossible <laughs> uh, to, uh, to enforce any rules on offline gaming. But online gaming... Under the age of 18, 90 minutes a day on a weekday. So uh, it would force, I suppose, people to concentrate more on their homework uh, if they uh, haven't. Uh, maybe even push people to more social interactions, uh, get them out, maybe doing other things, period. And then uh, three hours on a weekend. So you just get a little bit more, uh, twice as much. Uh, but still, you are open to doing other things. However, online only, it's not going to prevent them from loading an offline game. But offline games, of course, are becoming more and more rare, as online games are the games which can be monetized so much easier. It's very difficult to monetize an offline game, and that's why we've seen uh, essentially the death of offline games, because they want it there to be live at all times for updates, uh, etc. Uh, but at the end of the day the the bottom line is really so they can throw more monetization aspects at you on a consistent basis it's part of china's latest move to curb video game addiction which officials say is damaging to children's health china is one of the largest gaming markets the second overall and i'm pretty damn sure the first in mobile gaming the official government guidelines released on tuesday include spending limits for minors so this isn't just limiting the time that kids get to play a game this is limiting the amount of money they can spend and if you've seen my videos over the course of recent months then you'll know my absolute displeasure and disgust at the way that gaming companies multiple gaming companies not just blizzard ea and the others and such like have been desperate to target children. FIFA is a, a, an absolute prime example of that. A game that is available for everyone from the ages of three up, and yet it's heavily, heavily monetized with microtransactions, definitely targeted towards children, children who are ignorant about this sort of thing. I didn't understand finance. I didn't understand how money worked for a long time. When I was a kid, it's you just think your parents give you stuff, you know? You know that they have money. You know that there's some sort of exchange of currency for goods. But at the end of the day, you're just like, I want food, I want clothes, and I want Star Wars toys and Legos. And you're not particularly bothered about how your parents have to go about doing it. Now, we weren't particularly... Uh, you know, flush at all. Came from a very poor family, so we got what we got. Uh, but still, you, you, 
just expect things to happen. You expect clothes to fall on your back. You expect school books. You expect shoes, trainers, whatever, without fully understanding. So microtransactions are going to be something that kids aren't au fait with, aren't particularly aware of. It's, you know, it's just a, something that's attached to something. Bye, 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 bye. So when you mix the two together, very dangerous. And that's why we see all these horror stories of kids racking up tens of thousands of pounds, tens of thousands of dollars worth of debt on parents' credit cards. And if you think that companies like EA, Activision, Blizzard, uh, all the others, you think they are ignorant of this, you're a fool. They know exactly what they're doing. They're seeing what they can get away with. You can get, if you have to take a loss, you might get 10 wins in the process. That's the gaming industry. Welcome to it. Gamers 8 to 16 can only spend 200 yuan. <laughs> uh, that's about 22 quid UK or $29 US per month. Uh, while those between 16 and 18 can spend up to 400, twice as much, uh, yuan on their gaming account. So that's 44 quid or $58. So instead of having unlimited spending, uh, instead of having the potential to have the horror stories which we've had recently, they can't go above that. And how can, how can they not go above that? Well, obviously, the card will be linked to the account. The account will be linked to the profile. And as we're going to see, because I think one of the hardest things that they're going to be able to do to inf is enforce this, we'll see China have got a plan for that as well. China is the second largest gaming market in the world with US uh, global revenue surpassing China's for the first time this year due to China's increased regulations on the industry. China has repeatedly criticized video games for negatively effect affecting young people. In 2018, the government announced the establishment of a gaming regulator in response to concerns about nearsighted children. Uh, to limit the number of new online games and restrict paying time and develop an age restriction system. The, I mean, I think that's meant to be playing time, but you never know with this industry, do you? The same year, China enacted a halt on approvals for new video games, which lasted nine months, dealing a significant blow to the lucrative industry. And we also know that China, of course, has a very strict censorship system. What can actually be shown in a video game if it's to pass uh, code to be released in China? And with it being such a lucrative marketplace, as we have seen with Ubisoft and Rainbow Six, they tried to censor that. Diablo Immortal is an absolute censoring of the Diablo franchise. Uh, as regards to how it has been on PC, because they are desperate for that yuan. But with restrictions on that, whereas Blizzard would want all the money, suddenly, with it being imposed, you're not going to exactly get that. So how are China attempting to legitimately impose this? Because this would be so difficult. You'd think this would be so difficult. How can they tell all this sort of stuff? For the uh, Tencent, but before we go into that, actually, let's go into Tencent first, because this is quite interesting. Tencent have taken it upon themselves, the world's largest gaming company, uh, address criticism by limited game time to one hour per day for users under 12 and to two hours per day for users between 12 and 18. They also started requiring users to prove their age and identity against available state records so that's how china are looking to actually impose this going against state records but also building a system with uh, I, uh current identifications that are available so they're really going all out to try and make sure that this uh restriction on time this restriction on pay does go through to at least the vast majority of gamers out there the admin uh but new guidelines will apply apply universally to all online gaming platforms operating in china and will address enforcement concerns directly the administration will work with law enforcement 
to construct a unified identification system that gaming platforms can use to verify a user's identity and age with government data. So, this sort of gives the game companies a level of self-regulation, taking into account that it's them that has to do the cross-referencing. As we have seen, the gaming industry is not very good at self-regulating. So, I imagine if they don't uh, adhere to these guidelines, if they don't adhere to these rules, uh, we might see the government uh, enforce some sort of uh, strict fine system. Uh, possibly, or because uh, an external uh, c uh, company from China has to operate through a Chinese company, uh, expel them from being able to operate in China, and that's the last thing that they want to happen. So I think they might be uh, motivated to actually uh, do that. Last year, the World Health Organization listed gaming addiction, which they call gaming disorder, as a mental health condition for the first time. Uh, don't worry about bad parenting on top of that. The most recent America... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it just goes into the rest here. How does gaming affect your brain? I don't know. We electrocuted a child to find out. Uh, so there we go. I think that is uh, quite fascinating that it's actually China, a country that is not exactly known for its human rights uh a country which is uh well at the minute we know is in turmoil with countries like hong kong uh taiwan etc etc uh is trying its hardest to protect children while we have countries here in the west that are tr countries yeah countries here in the west which are trying their hardest to target children for these disgraceful monetization practices the world is flipped on its head once upon a time thought we were the good guys nah uh so there we go uh blizzard could find that uh games like diablo mortal or future projects even if they do go through and they're released and they uh manage to coexist with the thousands of others generic games which are identical to theirs in the marketplace in china uh don't quite garner the revenue that they wanted particularly with limit spend and also uh when p uh, people actually have to decide where their online play goes might not go with blizzard it might not go with ea it might not go with ubisoft or whoever it might go somewhere else entirely. Dungeon Adventure Online 4. Or whatever it is. Uh, so this could be a huge effect on Blizzard and other Western companies trying to crack the Eastern mobile marketplace and gaming marketplace, online gaming marketplace in general. Very interesting stuff indeed. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below and I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do get a thumbs up. And also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming. Links are in the description box down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.